Hello there, welcome! In today's video, we're going to build a 3D interactive website using ReactJS and Spline, a user-friendly tool for creating and designing in 3D. Spline makes it easy to design and export your 3D creations to various platforms and formats. For those who prefer no-code platforms like Webflow, Spline provides a public URL for seamless integration of your 3D assets. All right, let's get started. First, head over to the Spline website to download and install the program. It's completely free to use, but there is a premium subscription available if you want access to more advanced features. After installing Spline, launch it and set up your account to get started. On the home screen, you'll find the navigation panel on the left side, your projects here, video tutorials by the Spline team on YouTube, template projects and other 3D assets from the library, and community project remixes. Let's go ahead and open one of the projects from the library to learn the basics. Alright, in this scene, we have a 3D MacBook laptop. On the left side, we have the Scene and Assets panel, listing all the objects in the scene. On the right, you'll find the Properties and Settings menu. When no object is selected, this menu displays the properties and settings of the scene, such as the background color and environment settings like physics. When an object is selected, you'll see its specific properties such as height, materials, and more here. At the top of our scene, we have the toolbar. Here, you can add or insert new objects into the scene, access export settings, and preview the scene using the play button. All right, let's move on to the basic controls you need to know in Spline. To zoom in and out, use the scroll wheel. To orbit, hold the Alt key on Windows or the Option key on Mac and drag with the left mouse button. To pan around, click and hold the middle mouse button and drag the mouse, or hold the spacebar and drag with the left mouse button. If you get lost while panning around, press the Alt key or Option key on Mac and R to reset the camera. Also, if you noticed, the scene is in orthographic view, you can switch to a perspective view using the tabs here at the bottom. These are the basic controls you need to move and navigate around your scene. Now let's dive into creating and designing our 3D asset. Let's begin by creating a new project from the homepage. Once the project is created, delete the default rectangle and insert a cube into the scene from the toolbar. To ensure the cube is centered in our scene, right-click on the cube, scroll down, and select Reset Position. Now I'll increase the size of the cube. You can use the transform controls, but for precision, I'll use the properties panel to manually input the preferred values. Next, let's change the color of the cube to our preferred color, and also increase the corner rounding of the cube. Let's add another material to the cube, specifically the matcap material. Once the material is added, we can adjust its settings by selecting one of these options. Feel free to experiment and choose the one you think works best. I'll go with this one. Finally, change the blend mode of the material to overlay. Now let's add interactivity states for the cube. So basically, the cube will have two states. The current state is the base state. We're going to add another state for when we hover over the cube. In this second state, we can make the intended changes to the cube. I'll start by changing the Y position of the cube in the second state, which is the hover state. When I toggle between the two states, you can kind of see what is happening in both states. Next, I'll change the color of the cube in this state. And finally, I'll add a depth material to the cube, adjust its radius and position, and change its blend mode to multiply. All right, now let's add interactivity logic to the cube by attaching a mouse hover event. Click the plus icon to add an event, then select mouse hover from the dropdown. In the actions section, select transition. The transition target will default to the selected object, which is the cube, and we're going to transition from its base state to the second state. Next, modify the duration of the transition to your preference. I'm going to use 0.4 seconds, and that's it. Click the play button to preview the scene. 
Awesome! At this point, you can further customize the cube and add more materials to improve the overall design. Now it's time to duplicate the cube. Instead of manually duplicating and positioning each duplicate, which besides being tedious could lead to inconsistent spacing between the cubes, there's a better and more efficient way. First, select the cube and scroll down the Properties panel. Find and toggle the Cloner option. Next, customize the cloning settings. Change the cloning type from linear to grid. Then, set the Y value to 1 and adjust the X and Z values to your preferred settings. I'll set both to 30. When we preview the scene, you'll notice a problem. The transition is only triggered when the main cube is hovered. To fix this, go back to the Properties panel and click the Convert to Instances button right underneath the Cloner settings. This will create individual instances for each cube, along with their states and events. Finally, before we export our scene, we need to position a render camera at the preferred location and angle. This will be the camera used for previews and renders. It's important to note that there's no exact formula for positioning your camera. You'll need to experiment with different positions and angles to find what works best. Let's go ahead and add a camera from the toolbar. Now move the camera to various positions and try out different angles. But this process can be more tedious. What I usually do is move the personal camera to my preferred location. And once I'm satisfied with the position and angle, I'll then add the render camera. This will insert the render camera at the current position of the personal camera. Alright, once you're satisfied with the overall design of the scene, let's go ahead and export it. Click the Export button on the toolbar. Make sure to select React from this dropdown or Next.js if that's where you plan to integrate the scene. Next, go to the Play settings and make these changes. Set background color to hide, page scroll to no, and we'll leave the cursor at default. Now set these options to no, and finally, toggle the on hover option and set the behavior to orbit camera. This will create an orbit effect around the scene when you move the mouse. You can experiment with these values, but I'll leave them as they are. Also, set the reset option to no reset. Once you're done modifying the play settings, click the update code export button. After the operation is completed, go ahead and copy the export codes. Remember to click the update code export button after you make changes to the play settings. All right, now that we have our 3D scene ready, let's integrate it into this React app I've prepared for this project. To get started with Spline in React, we need to install the React Spline library. Head over to the React Spline GitHub repository to copy the installation script. Once you've installed the React Spline library, we can use the codes we copied from Spline. Instead of pasting the code directly inside the app component, I'll create a separate component for the scene. Now, we can use this component in our app. If everything is set up correctly, we should see the Spline scene in the app. Awesome, it works, but it needs some adjustments. Let's add some styles to position the scene correctly. Awesome! This is looking great! Good job! That will be all for this video. Remember, there's no right or wrong way to design. You just have to experiment and play with different values and settings. Let your imagination run wild, and in the end, you'll have a design you're satisfied with.
Even with this project, I spent several hours off-camera repositioning the camera, adjusting the angle, and modifying the duration of the transitions all things we covered in the video. But behind the scenes, several hours went into fine-tuning details, like setting the cube's transition to 0.4 seconds, just to achieve a design I was happy with. This should tell you that there's no right or wrong way to approach this, just play and enjoy the process. Alright, that's enough talking. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time with another awesome video.